Hello everyone, this is Richard from Thrive and Survive, and this will be part three in a series I'm doing on foreign policy and uh, Ron Paul's reasoning for his uh, foreign policy stances. Now this one, I'm not going to go into great detail because I don't want it to be long, because I feel this is the most important one with, in dealing with Iran, because people just don't understand the history there, and uh, you know the shorter videos get get more people to see them, and this is the most important thing. And there's also the it's the it's the biggest thing that people have uh, a problem with Ron Paul with, is his foreign policy stance, but the problem is they've had propaganda. Uh, by the machine so long, look at the other videos I've done and, and know what the machine is, the military industrial complex and how they fed politicians uh, money and uh, you've just been propagandized by them and the media and everybody else that's been bought off. Now um, recently one of our local radio hosts here in um, Arizona uh, on uh, Phoenix Station, his name is uh, Mike Broomhead he filled in for Glenn Beck on uh, the Glenn Beck show. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear everything he was talking about with this because I had something else to do and I had to, to leave the car. And that's where I listened to the radio. But he made the point, uh, and just let me point out that uh, the local radio, of all the local radio, um, Mike Broomhead, Broomhead is the only one that's, uh, I think, half awake and at least willing to listen uh, to other points of view and um, consider all the different angles and things like that, which is rare nowadays. We know we don't see that with Sean Hannity or Rush Limbaugh or, you know, Glenn Beck's half awake too. Um, and I can get into that if you want to hear about that. But um, I do give him credit for that. And I've written him before and he's responded and I, and I do appreciate that. But uh, the point he brought up was, uh, the part I was able to hear, uh, he was talking about you have to go back in history and look at what happened in Iran and to realize, you know, you know the situation that we have in the United States. Uh, and I'm going to assume probably some of what his thing was with it. Um, he went back to Jimmy Carter and talked about how when Jimmy Carter was in office, how. Uh, the people in Iran overthrew the U.S. Embassy. Now there's plenty of other embassies in Iran, but they overthrew the U.S. Em embassy. And that was during the time period when they had just overthrown the Shah of Iran. And um, there was large anti-American sentiment. Of all the different embassies there, it was anti-American sentiment. And I imagine he's talking about, you know, these are people that are willing to um, support terrorism. You know, they, they did terrorism on us then. They, they captured 50 of our hostages and they kept them for 444 days, if I remember correctly. And um, he was released. Uh, those 50 hostages weren't released until the, the, the exact time that Ronald Reagan was sworn in as president. But, um, like I said, I, I give Mike Broomhead credit for at least going partway in history. There's another radio show on in the morning. It's called The, Near, uh, the Nearly Ignorant uh, Barry Young. I'm sorry. It's called The... Um, nearly famous Barry Young show and Barry Young and this woman total moron people who just keep, have both eyes closed they're deep into the propaganda hole and they cannot they, they can't bear to see any kind of light by opening their eyes that's different that's one thing that's different with Mike Broomhead so if he's on again filling him for Glenn Beck I hope he is he is one of the people that uh, does see both sides of the story but they don't see this either uh, they see it as you know they sponsor terrorism they've gone after us in Iraq and different things like that the problem is we haven't gone back in history far enough and Ron Paul goes back in history all the time to the media and they never question it they never bring out details about it because they know uh, he, Ron Paul did this, I can't remember on one cha what channel he did it on. Oh, like he did it on Fox News with O'Reilly. And O'Reilly went nuts and just cut it off and said, I don't want a history lesson. Well, of course he didn't want a history lesson because Ron Paul was spew uh, spewing the truth. Here's what happened. Now imagine this is our country and it's happening right now. Imagine it's um, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela teaming up with uh, the Chinese doing exactly what I'm about to tell you, what we did in Iran in 1953. Iran in 1953 was a democratic country. You know how we always say we want democratic countries to come out of this nation building that we do all over the place? And that's always been our thing? Well, not exactly in 1953. And here's what happened. In 1953 uh, and before, before that period, uh, all of Iran's oil was actually under a British control, uh, a British uh, company. And um, until that period of time, you know, they got all the rewards for it. In 1953, or slightly before, Iran decided to nationalize their own oil so that 
you know, their government got the proceeds from the oil. They were basically kicking out uh, the British Empire. The British, you know, it was just another piece in the fall of the British Empire that was going on at that time. And uh, Britain lost control then of the oil because they nationalized it. Well, we didn't want to see that happen either. So what happened was Eisenhower and uh, Churchill didn't just hook up in World War II and get things done. They hooked up in 1953 and got things done. What they said was, we can't have this. So they, uh, Eisenhower instructed the CIA, gave the CIA carte blanche permission to go in there and overthrow the freely elected government. Uh, I believe the, the title was Prime Minister uh, in Iran. It, that could be wrong, but I think that's what it was. Anyway, he um, went in there and uh, with the CIA um, killed 800 people in the streets. CIA mobs that went in. They killed 800 people in the streets, overthrew the government that was there, uh, the freely elected government. Just say it's Obama, say it's Bush, say it's Reagan in there right now. And the countries I mentioned earlier in there they send people, they drop them off in D.C. and overthrow, you know, Congress and the government and put in a dictator, which is what Churchill, Britain, and Eisenhower, the United States, did through the CIA. They overthrew their government and put in a dictator, okay? In a little bit of time, it became the Shah of Iran. Now, the Shah of Iran was very weak, but he was um, uh, given military armaments and things to stay in power from the U.S., uh, back door, as usual, wasn't a front door type of thing. And then uh, the United States also got in on uh, the oil money money uh, scheme with this. And this is not disputed history. This is recorded history. Okay? So we went in there and did that. Now how would you feel about Hugo Chavez and the Chinese if they just did that to our government? They took a free elected government, threw it out because they want to control of our textile industry, let's say and wanted money off of because they were, they were desperate for textiles in, in uh, China. Or uh, even better, they were desperate for rare earth metals and they hadn't quite cornered the market because there's still some here in the United States. So how would you, the people, feel about the United States and Britain after that was done to your government? Let me ask you that. Now what happened was, it took all the way until the 1970s before they, the people in Iran got so fed up and got strong enough to be able to overthrow what was going on over there and they picked the perfect time we had a weak American president. That's why they were so mad at the US and overthrew the US embassy and no other embassy. I'm surprised they didn't go after the British embassy uh, to be honest with you. They, they probably had a little propaganda in their history to forget about it too. But it was the US that was really in control and getting the proceeds from the oil. So that's the real history. That is why Iran is so into supporting anything that takes down the United States. Can you understand why? Now the thing is, do we continue this? Oh, and guess, guess what? What we did while all this was going on uh, and caused this whole thing uh, to happen was we decided to have oil sanctions against Iran so that they couldn't make money on it. That was the first thing we did before we went in there and actually overthrew the government. So we've been playing the same game diplomatically since 1953. We come up with sanctions against their oil. It's the same game. We created the terrorist over there. Look this history up. I'm, I'm leaving a lot of details out. This is why they hate us. And we're still over there. I'm going to show a map, maybe, or take a look at a map. Look at, look at the Middle East. Look at Iran. Okay. Now, let's just say the Chinese and uh, Venezuela with Hugo Chavez in, is put in charge in the U.S. and that's how they did it. Picture that country's then setting up military bases all over Canada, all over Mexico, all over Cuba. They would have us surrounded, wouldn't they? Now go and look at the Middle East and look where we are. Look at where we are in Pakistan and Afghanistan and all the other countries, Saudi Arabia, the Straits of Hormuz. Look at the countries we have bases in and where we have military action going on right now including where we supposedly just left, where we have the biggest embassy and biggest entrance uh, into any time we want through Kuwait. Look at that in Iraq. Now look at one country we surround and tell me, would you want the U.S. presence out? Would you be scared? We did the same thing to Saudi Arabia. Do you know that through history that Osama bin Laden was on our side and we helped him fight the Russians to try to get them out of Afghanistan? He only turned against us when we did stuff like this and then put military in, in Saudi Arabia. Wouldn't you think that in Saudi Arabia that might be the next thing? Their government would be overthrown? 
we need to think about this and get off this propaganda machine that is fed down and jammed down our throats every single day. This is why terrorists want to kill us. So think about it. Should we continue our foreign policy as we always have? I think I've already shown it's ridiculous to think that Iran with a nuclear weapon could do anything to us. They won't do it and I've proved, I think without a shadow of a doubt, that they'd be total morons to fire one at Israel because Israel would send a hundred of them right back on them. They'd be totally wiped out as a people. Extension if they did that. Stupidity. Straits of Hormuz, I already explained that too. I've been there. I was in the Navy. They can't close it down. They don't have the they don't have the Navy to do it. This is all BS you're being fed. I saw an article the other day, just you know, it was the day of the Iowa caucuses of all days. It was talking about crisis in the Middle East in the Straits of Hormuz. There's no crisis people. Go back and also do a search when Iran has supposedly been within weeks or months of getting a nuclear bomb. I'm all the way back to 2006 and I've gone through page after page after page. We keep floating this balloon up that they have a nuclear bomb or, or within weeks of a nuclear bomb. And when you can tell they're floating that bomb, uh, here, there's one thing that takes place every single time we do that. The stooge that goes out to march the message to the conservatives. It's the old person that, that was, uh, what's his name, Bolton? He used to be in the United Nations, our ambassador. Every time this happens, Bolton's on Fox News talking about how we got to go over there and attack him. He's the trial balloon guy. He's the stooge. Remember I told you that Bricks and Torn would be the stooge set up in Iowa? What happened? Anyway, um, this was way longer than I wanted to do it, but you need to have the history on this. You need to know our history to know that we can't support that anymore. Anybody other than Ron Paul that's running for president on either side or with an I, an R, or a D next to his name has the same failed policy, the same trillions of dollars spent. People dying is the main thing. People die for this. And it's because we started it. Okay? But all we want to talk about is, oh, they came over here on 9-11 and attacked us. It's BS, people. Wake up. Thanks. Talk to you soon. There's one other thing I want to add to the end of that. Um, the argument I've heard several times now is, what if the French hadn't helped us uh, in, uh, you know, when we were doing the Revolutionary War, we might not have won that war. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. Uh, I don't know what the French's um, constitution says, whether it allows them to get involved in foreign entanglements. Ours certainly doesn't. But let's just say theirs does. What they don't tell you is afterwards the French people died by the score, by the thousands, by the tens of thousands from hunger because they couldn't pay off the war reparations from helping us. They don't tell you that part of the history. That was the end of France's empire essentially right there. It's what spawned the uh, let them eat cake comment because the people were starving and the, <laughs> the French aristocrats that was their attitude. What's the attitude of our leaders? Think about it. Take care, guys. Bye.